One hadith mentions that uh, one of the tabi'un was in Kufa, and Kufa was the land of Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud established his madrasa in Kufa. The greatest Sahabi of Kufa was Ibn Mas'ud, and he died in Kufa as well. So Ibn Mas'ud was in Kufa, and one of these tabi'in, his name is Yusayd ibn Jabir, he said, one day it was very cloudy and a dark storm, a dust storm came in the daytime, blocked the sun, and it seemed very terrifying. So a man came shouting to the masjid, Oh Ibn Mas'ud, Oh Ibn Mas'ud, the day of judgment is coming. Looking at what is happening, he became terrified. He's running to Ibn Mas'ud saying, Look, this is Qiyamah coming. Ibn Mas'ud then stood up amongst the people. The people are looking to him for comfort, for wisdom. The people are terrified. They're gathered in the masjid. Ibn Mas'ud stood up and he said, The Qiyamah will not come until... And then he gave a series of predictions. Now, by the way, this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, I forgot to mention, and it's a long hadith. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud stood up and he said, The Qiyamah is not going to come until you see these signs. And these signs haven't come, so this cannot be the Qiyamah. Number one, he said, people will not be able to divide their inheritance. This means massacres and death will be so profound that a person will have no family left. And people will not be happy over ghanima, war booty. Once again, means there's no family. And, we're, and this is explicitly mentioned, we'll call it Then he pointed towards Asham, Syria. He is in Iraq. He points towards the land that is known as Sham. And he said, and an enemy will gather forces against the Muslims. And the Muslims will gather forces against them. A man in the audience said, do you mean a Rome, the Romans? He said, yes. Now the Romans refers to European civilization, the Christian empires. And there's no problem extrapolating the concept of Romans to the modern nations that look up to that empire as being there, if not biological, there theological and their intellectual ancestors. We all know went over this as well. So the term Roman, Rome, can de facto apply to the majority civilization, the superpowers of our times. So, and by the way, this is interesting because again, uh, these are predictions that we are now seeing taking place. So, uh, Ibn Mas'ud said, yes, I mean the Romans. And at that time, there will be a severe fighting, a fierce fighting. The Muslims will send a battalion to fight to death and they will not return. They will die. They will fight until night. Neither side will be victorious over the other. On the second day, the Muslims will send another battalion and they will fight to death and they will not return victorious. On the third day, the same thing will happen. And then on the fourth day, so for three days, Muslims are going in, 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 and it is going to be massacre after massacre. Nobody will remain alive from the first batches that go. On the fourth day, Allah Azza wa Jal will grant victory victory to the Muslims and the enemy will be defeated. So there will be four days of battle somewhere in Bilad the sham Now, is this the great Armageddon or is this the precursor to the Armageddon? This is not the great Armageddon it looks like. This is the precursor. This is a, a massive war that will take place before the Armageddon. Now the hadith goes on and this is from the sta statement. This will be a battle the likes of which have never seen before. This is very terrifying. In human history, no battle has taken place that is more terrifying and more severe than that battle that will take place towards the end of times. And then Ibn Mas'ud said, and this is so powerful, and it's not Ibn Mas'ud, it is from the Prophet Sallallahu so much so that a bird that will fly over them will fall down dead. Now, you tell me, before I move on, you tell me, no matter how many people are killed by the swords on this land, Will it affect a bird in the heavens? No. What will affect a bird in the heavens? Not swords. Get the point. Not swords. Something's going to happen that a bird in the heavens will be flying over. It will come down dead. And then the hadith goes on. Out of a family of 199 will perish and one will survive. The attrition rate in this war 99% Allah Mustahan. What war in human history has had 99% death? None. I don't know of any. 99%. The victory was given to the 1%. 99%. And this is when the Prophet said, Ibn Mas'ud said, So, how can anyone be happy over Ghanima or any inheritance be divided? In other words, 
May Allah protect all of us. If somebody were to give you a million dollars but you have no family, Wallahi, what sane person will choose that? Family is worth more than this whole dunya. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, how can anybody be happy when he gets all the ghanima and 99 of his family had that? He's nobody left, no parents, no children, nothing left. How can anybody be happy? What is the point of that ghanima? It's all gone. How will inheritance be divided when there will be no family left? So this war will destroy 99% of those fighting in it. While they are doing this, and they are finishing the battle, collecting the ghanima, re recovering, they will hear there's a bigger calamity than this war. What could be a bigger calamity? Somebody will shout out that the Dajjal has come where your families have been left behind. So in that state, tired, bruised, bleeding, but their families are being attacked. Whoever is remaining in the land that they left behind, Bilad the Sham, wherever there is, they will run, they will rush back to that land and they will discover that it is a, a lie. It is not uh, true. And in one hadith it is mentioned that uh, they will send their 10 best horsemen to go verify that news. The 10 fastest horsemen. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, I know their names and the names of their forefathers and the colors of their horsemen, the colors of their horses, and they will be the best horsemen on the face of this earth. Now, does this mean we will go back to horses and swords? If there is that type of war, in all likelihood we will. If there is that type of war, when nuclear weapons and whatnot and every side and whatnot, then we will go back to those days when there was no electricity and whatnot. We're going to go back to this. Or is it possible that when the process of saying horse, he means a vehicle? This is also possible. It's not too much of a stretch and Allah knows best. So this hadith mentions. Now, does this hadith mention the Mahdi? Yes or no? No, it does not. But other hadith mention that the Mahdi will be the one that will be there when the news comes that the Dajjal is around. So it appears that this big war that is being referenced is a war that the Mahdi will participate in even though he's not mentioned in this, in this one, right? So it is a war between a Rum and between the Muslims. It is a massive war. Now, many have said this hadith is a reference to the Armageddon. And it could be true. Because here's the point. Is the Armageddon one battle or is it a series of battles? It goes back. If it's only one battle, then in all likelihood that will be Dajjal and Isa ibn Maryam. But if it is a series of major battles, then it makes sense that this hadith in fact is one of those big battles of the Armageddon. Allah knows best.